because well, all this, uh, most of the like climate or, or no, all the fields uh, assume that variables are like continuously defined everywhere in space, temperature or anything. And then the numerical method consists in solving this continuous equation everywhere, choosing grid more or less big, but things move the grid, what is things are calculated doesn't. And this animation you showed, this uh, every single element is moving and, and the computing is uh, following this. It's what's called Appalachian, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's interesting. And I've seen also some simulation in climate start like to model the, the breaking of ice. And yeah. they, I mean, these are techniques that may, that may come. I mean, this, yeah. There are some exchanges sometimes between technique, technology, and uh, in the private sector, and also climate and, and science. Well, yeah, exactly. And it could have a scientific use also. So yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I also agree with that. There will probably be more merging of fields as they develop. And that's kind of the reason why these people started to develop the sound, uh, because they come from CG. They they're more invested in like uh, CG rendering and simulation of materials and so on. Yeah, but then they they got more. They they kind of figured out that we also can do that with sound to some extent. So for sure, there's a there's definitely an overlap. You know. No, about something. I was just this, I was just surprised by there was a lot of talk about like truth and trust in the last session. I found that really, really interesting when Andreas Salzburger said, um, "Ignore the truth," you know, and then uh, Baruch said, uh, or like he quoted, I don't know what that was actually. It looked more like a haiku that said science is no longer about the search for truth. It is about reproducing, um, reproducing, no, yeah, re repeatable results. So the, but then this question of like the, when, when Salzburger said that like, it's about trusting the machine, you know, and like when I met him, he was talking about understanding the beast. So there's, there's all these kind of like, um, I find that quite interesting, this kind of like that, that even truth is, and, and also maybe how that might relate to other fields like biology, which are intrinsically much more, much more difficult, and which also introduce like a certain breaking point to physics that are, you know, like things like evolution, for example, that are also like led by strange effects that are probability and, and emergence and often poorly understood. I wonder if you have any, any more thoughts on truth? <laughs> You know, I think, uh, well, what I heard uh, recently that um, uh, it's like uh, almost 50% of the uh, top physicists are working on the LHC uh, problem and they, uh, uh, and it's like, oh, can't they, can't they be doing something else? I mean, like, uh, we talk a lot about giving them confidence. They have confidence to do these things, but like, uh, I think we need a lot more confidence to, to deal with like, like, I don't know, solving some other problems. It's also a question like after this repeatable process, there is a truth, right? They are searching for truth after they can prove it. I mean, it is in a larger scale. It's just that there's this process first that we base it on the scientific idea or the theory, right? But after that, there's a truth. They want truth, else why would you spend like billions on something like this? I mean, they want to discover something that can like determine the reason why a material work in that way, and that is the truth, right? Like, they want truth. There's, they're, they're, they definitely say they don't, like they say they want to pursue uh, everything else than that, and then you have to abandon that, but, but abandoning truth also is just looking for another truth to some extent. They're not, of course, they're experimental physicists to some degree, right? Like they're, but at the same time, they are interested in manifesting certain truths. What they say is the, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, like, uh, just like, uh, they're manifesting, they, they're interested in manifesting control over materials. And those materials also include us. And, uh, and the people who are interested in, in, in uh, generating value from us are, are interested in these experiments because of this. And I don't think there's any other fundamental truth behind it all. I mean, that's the point, is the tr that's my point, that's the truth. 
this exact process. Not, not, not like a truth in the classical sense like you referred to before that the scientific the science would prove this, but it's the process of this is what they're, this constant search for something, right? That becomes the truth in itself. Like it justifies everything. It justifies these huge budgets. It justifies all this process for the search of this, right? Like for the search of something bigger. Well, I think that yeah. Well, the bigger bigger thing is uh, to um, what do you say? Uh, but like, it's to win. That's the biggest thing. To win. To win. Yeah. To win all every all the things. I mean, that's the that's the problem. That's why we have like this kind of like uh, a weird, ironic uh, short circuit, whereby like in in your case, you know, like you're you're doing these climate models, or we're doing these high uh, high high energy physics, and you know, there is also low energy physics. It's not not very well studied right now because like high energy physics is is about uh, is much more um, able to manifest control over processes and it's dealing with this this uh, this uh, cybernetic um, uh, reality which we're increasingly uh, engaged in but like you get this kind of strange uh, feedback loop whereby you know you need more and more computing power right to generate the the climate models right the climate models yeah. Bigger, bigger, more, more detailed, more detailed. We need, we need more, more sophisticated climate models. But the compute, the, the generation of computation itself, and it also has to do, like, in the crypto community, like where they're all talking about, like, you know, uh, blockchain, proof of work based um, uh, solutions to the economic crisis, is like more computation. Well, computation is mining, mining. It's not. It's real physical mining. It's digging sh stuff out of the ground under terrible conditions in a lot of cases, you know? And then uh, polluting industries around mining, trying to refine the metals, and the unfair conditions in the assembly plants and everything else, and there's more and more and more of that, and more obsolescence in that. So there's like, uh, and, and uh, so you're, you're ruining the water tables, you're ruining uh, uh, generations of people's lives, and this is supposed to be like uh, the, the uh, op op optimistic uh, vision of how we're going to get out of a crisis. I find that's very ironic. Okay, well, you can say that with everything. So to me, I don't know, I won't answer directly to that. But, but there's an uh, interesting anecdote about that. This, like this uh, paleoclimate, I mean, this simulation I showed. Well, first of all, this guy, Andrei Ganopolsky, that it is, it takes a completely different perspective, you know. He developed this very simple model compared to this uh, super complex GCM, because first when he arrived here uh, as a Russian citizen, he was not uh, even allowed to use a supercomputer based in Max Planck City in Hamburg. So he developed a new concept. <laughs> it all had to be simple, but uh, more and more, uh, you know, concept and elements. Even the simulations are just not at all on supercomputer. He did that alo almost alone on his own. And and with this one simulation, not reproducible, probably you change compiler and processor, you will have small, tiny differences or something. But he's, he's really has been the last 20 years looking for truth, for, in a sense, what mechanism explain for what um, have happened, what we observe. So things how you observe things in high score, you have this all oscillation. So this is in truth, and then things have happened. The data may be contaminated. Maybe you are not interested in everything because something may have been just random, and I, you know, don't need to spend our ages to find why this small deviation from normal to truth because maybe this is not so important at the end. But m generally speaking, it has been you know, 10 years to, to look for something, to really an understanding. And <laughs> I would not just discard all that just based uh, on uh, science epistemology, or of course, you need to to step back, be aware of what modeling is doing, but you know, otherwise, you know, it's just, it's just kind of relativism, uh, you know, I don't know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will continue on that and say that it's also quite ironic to sit on a computer and present this kind of Luddite uh, uh, argument while you're funded by a university, obviously, that is a part of the structure that is, and then you're going to waste your time, in my opinion, to start to criticize while you sit at the highest point in the system, which is academia. I mean, for me, that's like, yeah, that's a waste of time, really. Personally, I think it's a waste of time. But, but that's, uh, luckily, I don't run this world, and I don't think it would be a good idea either. But uh, uh, I think, 
It's strange that you re disregard so much science for what it is while you sit here on the beamer with a computer. I mean, like, where, where do you draw the line from where we should have taken another step or direction? Like, where do you draw this line? Well, I think we can draw the line, uh, you know, every moment. You know, I mean, okay, we got to this point. That's great. Look at what, look at what we got accomplished. Look at the situation we were in. Look at the awareness that we've been able to generate. You know, look at these magnificent machines. They're a real miracle of human collaboration, albeit in some cases forced and, and in some cases voluntary. And whatever, whatever the conditions are. But we can face the conditions as they are now and say, okay, where do we want to go from here? Do we want to continue on that way? That vector, it seems pretty promising, oh yeah. I think my banking is gonna be a lot more uh, uh, convenient. But like, or we can look for other alternatives. But I don't think the simulations are gonna, uh, I mean, we have, to, we have to be able to simulate um, other alternatives. Uh, and maybe computerized simulation is not the only way to do it. Quantified. Comments? Is truth maybe in the variability in the end to come back to the theme of the, the theme of the day? Like, I mean, if you talk about climate, or if you think about climate science, is is there a, is there actually like something you can actually look for, or is it to kind of like constrain the variability sufficiently to say to be like to be to trust them? Like, I'm I'm keep using these terms consciously, like to trust the model enough to, because I mean, it's so inherently or like intrinsically political. Um, which we've also seen today that like that you know this it kind of like be, it stays like a human thing in the end you know and and I'm wondering like how the variability and the computation and the trust and the politics and the voters and the politicians like how that relates and how you kind of like see that in your work for example. No, all of my work is maybe only trivial examples of uh, well, I don't know if you end up of course. Uh, advising doing policy advice uh, for some uh, stakeholders that uh, for example need more impact or less climate impact or something uh, they might uh, unconsciously if you boss one more than on that of course you may be unconsciously pushed in a little bit in one direction or if you are really part of if you are there sit in the room the conference i need something a talking point in 15 minutes but that's not science word anymore i mean i've been in this kind of situations but that's uh, that's yeah in my like scientific work at the institute, I mean, pff, yeah, I mean, peak but I'm, is uh, uh, maybe compared to other scientific institutes, probably more politicized because people who grounded it were really okay. Let's start to think about environment and how human and all that play a role together, and maybe well, we would push toward uh, you know attract attention on climate and probably there is a push toward that and but there are also very different opinions about it within it but and but all share even the most proactive uh, pro climate and other active on internet even there are people i trust you know and are, who are really passionate about something you may uh, you know not agree or like, oh no if they would push an idea of being quite bold you would say well uh, since i would have stopped before but but they are still honest in you know in what they are doing so i Respect. I still, for me, I find it's a very free environment, and uh, well, you have constraints which are like everyone's constraint. You have the money, funding, and stuff. So there are sexy topics where you may be able to publish. You want, you know, if you want to publish, it's, it's very dramatic. Of course, it's uh, you know, it's better. <laughs> but well, unfortunately, we uh, cannot always find dramatic results. So uh, we also have to find to publish a boring paper in normal scientific reviews, and that's what most people do, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> truth and variability. I, well, I don't exactly know. Oh, I you mean, well, in terms of uh, uh, of climate and the science behind. I mean, to me, there are some very clearly constrained things from the law of physics, and therefore there are some chaotic, some stochastic events on top. And themselves will be some law, but are more stochastic law. And I mean, you have to to understand what you can model, what not, what is useful, what you can reach, what not, you know, weather forecast, you know, you may reach a few days, but you will never reach uh, three weeks because there are chaotic processes and you know why you cannot do. For climate, you go a bit longer because you're interested in averages and there are some forces in presence and so you know that you can, but you know that you will not be able to know exactly the year to year variability and uh, never do and uh, you just have to, yeah, understand what the limits are and what you can reach, but yeah. I'm not sure I grasp your, your point, but I'm always so depressed. So, so.
Well, I think I, I just uh, mentioned it's also in the Brigitte Falkenberg uh, and also in Nancy Cartwright's uh, the law, uh, How the Laws of Physics Lie, which I all, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm mentioning these books, which are, I mean, Brigitte Falkenberg is very respectful of uh, quantum physics, but, um, and Nancy Cartwright is controversial, but um, the idea is that, okay, variability, uh, the, the particles that we are um, learning to, learning how they behave, uh, uh, they are very variable, uh, and we understand certain aspects of them, and we use what we understand from those at, from those variable variables um, in order to make these computers work. For example, on the nanoscale, so there's a tension between the variable and the whatever tried and true. So I guess we should conclude. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a really good session as well, really lively, and though actually proper debate. Um, thank you so much for sticking around so long. We only went one hour over schedule, <laughs> and yeah, I hope I hope everybody found something they found interesting in the variability of the panels. Um, hit us up on Facebook, <laughs> avant.org. Leave Berlin. <laughs> it's all there. Um, thank you.